Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Qualys today released details regarding a approach escalation vulnerability that Qualys calls Stack Clash. Now, typically, approach escalation vulnerabilities don't excite me that terribly much. What's interesting here is that a number of different Unix-based operating systems are affected. So it's not just Linux, it's also OpenBSD, NetBSD, FreeBSD, and Solaris as far as it's running on an i386 or AMD64 architecture. Now, interestingly, the fundamental problem isn't actually new. It was originally found in 2005, and Qualys also refers uh, to that particular discovery. And what's happening here is that as software needs more space on the stack, the stack will sort of automatically increase in size, but it may eventually clash or overwrite existing heap memory, and that leads then to approach escalation where a user's stack grows over heap from another process and as a result arbitrary code could be executed. Now, if it's an old vulnerability back from 2005 and actually then in 2010, other variations of it uh, were discovered, why is this still in news? The interesting thing is that Qualys came up with ways to bypass the security mechanism that was implemented originally. Essentially, what was implemented to prevent this from happening is what's called a stack guard page. Stack guard is a memory area just below the stack that will essentially be used as a sensor to detect if the stack is growing. So if the stack is expanded into this memory, that's a sign that the stack needed more memory and the operating system can deal with it. What Qualys found out is that if you trigger an expansion of the stack that exceeds the size of that stack art page, then the stack is extended to a memory page that's no longer covered by this stack guard, and that way it goes undetected and you may again run into heap memory and overwrite it and you're back to privilege escalation. So how big of a deal is it? Uh, well, Qualys hasn't released any exploits yet for this vulnerability. They state that they wrote a number of them and that they will eventually release them. They did release quite a bit of details about how this particular vulnerability could be exploited. So it's very possible that others will write exploits for this pretty soon. All the affected operating systems have released updates. At this point, well, since it's only a uh, approach escalation vulnerability, I wouldn't panic. I would wait for the official operating system patch to be released. But once you see it show up, and it should show up if it hasn't already, within the next couple days, you probably want to apply it rather quickly. Exploitation, of course, also depends a lot on what software you're running on the system. Some of it may be easier to exploit than others. Qualys says that it may be possible that this vulnerability can be exploited across the network, but doing so would be quite tricky and not very predictable. And Rob in his ISC diary today is using a recent incident where an administrator was let go from a hosting company in the Netherlands and wiped out a number of customer systems in revenge as a reason to talk about separation of duties and how to deal with administrative accounts and how to prevent them from going rogue. I find that this tends to be quite difficult for smaller companies because you just don't have the number of people to properly separate duties, a lot of cross-training and uh, also uh, access uh, to systems uh, by uh, multiple administrators is required in order uh, to maintain uh, proper operations. Larger companies, of course, may have an easier uh, time implementing this. For the smaller ones, uh, one of the critical things that I always uh, tend to focus on is is proper offline backups because other than that there isn't typically much you can do if you only have a small number of administrators. 
It has always been quite difficult to communicate with satellites securely given that many satellites use RF antennas that send signals over large parts of the globe. So recently there has been some interest in using lasers for satellite based communication and there were in the recent days two interesting news items where quantum crypto key distribution was used with satellites. First a news item was for a Chinese team. They actually have a dedicated experimental satellite that can be used in order to test quantum cryptography. The goal apparently here is to establish a global network of these satellites. This particular satellite was 300 kilometers above Earth. The second item actually did use a satellite that was originally planned to be used for quantum cryptography. Instead it was an existing satellite that used laser communication and a team from the Max Planck Institute in Erlangen uh, was able to adapt this system for quantum key distribution. This particular satellite was actually in a geostationary orbit at 38,000 kilometers. Now the bit rates achieved here were fairly small from what I've seen. I think I remember seeing the Chinese one having something like a thousand bits or so uh, being transmitted. There is of course a lot of distortion, a lot of loss making this a rather unreliable channel. But then again, these are sort of just some initial proof of concept uh, experiments. Well, and that's it for today. I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that I'm this week in Minneapolis. I'll be giving a talk about the Internet Storm Center on Wednesday evening. So if you are interested in attending, uh, please uh, drop me an email. There's also a Women Connect event on uh, Wednesday. So if you're willing to attend that, uh, there is a sign up form for that. I'll uh, post a link uh, to the show notes. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.